Hey folks, John here, I'll take Ray Forge, welcome back. So I got a comment on one of my most recent videos asking if I could do a Viking spearhead, and that's actually something I've been wanting to tackle for a while now. And I have attempted it before. What I got here is a, this is a socket and core that are actually made of wrought iron, and I was gonna forge weld a hardenable steel outer edge to it. And I got to that point with a, the last time I attempted this, but I didn't have the right size stock, and it's like, I'd get one side welded and turn it over to work on the other and it would mess up and it would screw this up and it just wasn't worth the trouble. So eventually I'm going to revisit this again, but uh, today what we got, a chunk of 1075 high carbon steel, quarter inch thick, two inches wide, cut off at 13 inches. That should give me enough material for a six inch socket and a pretty good sized blade. The term Viking spear is actually kind of a misnomer because spears of the Viking era, or not of the Viking era, but of the Viking you know, region are pretty much indistinguishable from other spears of the time period. They're pretty much the same. So, uh, you know, you can call it a Viking spear if you want to, but the spear was the most common weapon throughout history because it was easy to make, easy to use. Anybody can use a spear effectively. You don't have to be a trained soldier or a professional to know that stick them with the pointy end. So anyway, that's what we got going on. So stick around. First things first, I've got a center punch mark at six inches. I'm just going to chuck this thing up in my guillotine tool and isolate the material that we're going to form into the socket. Another two are really. Next step in forming the socket now that we've got our material isolated is just to start working on the fly of the anvil. You can use the horn as well if you're in a hurry, but there's really not much you need to. And we're trying to forge this out into kind of a fan shape type deal. So, just a long reverse taper. Nothing to it, really. So, once you got your fan shape, you want to go ahead and take a cross beam and start spreading the material out widthwise. I've learned from my trial and errors in spear making you need about four inches of width to be able to roll it around into a one inch socket. So it's smart to use a cross beam. Convert as much of that mass into width as you can. The wider and thinner this gets, the faster you're gonna lose heat because there's more surface area in contact with the anvil. So it's kind of slow going, but just keep at it, you'll be okay. So to start forming the socket of the spear, I'm just gonna use a half round swage on my small swage block. If you don't have one of these, this can just as easily be done over the jaws of your vise. But I have one, so I'm going to use it. To finish shaping the socket, I've got a tool called a bickern, or a hardy bick. Basically, it sits in your anvil like that. It's like a small horn. Lock it in there with a wedge. The wedge is mild steel, so there's no worry about it damaging the anvil. Put this thing on here. Start forming that socket. So I've got the socket formed to where we have a pretty good overlap most of the way up. Looking back, I probably could have used a little more material up near the top, but you leave you learn. So next thing I'm gonna do is try to forge weld this thing. So now it's time to try to forge weld the socket. This is a difficult weld to pull off for two reasons. The metal's very, very thin and you have precious few seconds to get it welded before it gets too cold. Also, you've got to fit it onto the mandrel and if you miss and or screw it up your alignment or anything like that or don't have it turned the right way, you're going to lose heat before you can weld. So, let's give it a go. Like I said, brush in a few seconds. That felt pretty good. Brush it, flux it back in the fire. So, because you lose heat so fast, you're inevitably going to have to take a few passes up and down the entire length of the socket to try to get the whole thing welded. But it seems to be going pretty well. So that's about as forge welded as this socket's gonna get. There's really just not enough material to allow for sufficient stock reduction for a seamless weld. But I've got it straightened up. I was able to straighten it up and it uh, behaved pretty much as one piece of metal. So next thing we'll do is we'll flip it around and we'll forge out the point. To forge out the point of the spear, I'm gonna try a technique I just learned recently. Basically, to forge out a taper, what you do, rather than starting up here, is you'll start back here and use the edge of the anvil to kind of continuously offset the metal all the way up and down and the idea is that should keep it from fish mouthing so moving right along forging out this taper this offsetting technique seems to be working pretty well there's still a little bit of a fish mouth but much less than there might normally be so just keeping at it i'm going to cheat and cut off the fish mouthing judge me if you want to Now 
I'll just take a couple more heats, bring the point into center, and dress up all these marks out of the taper before I move on to distally tapering the spear. Just like a sword, it needs to be distally tapered from the socket to the point to make sure it's well balanced. So that's what's going to happen next. This is where my straight peen is going to come in handy. As you can see, the metal's the thickest up here towards the point, and that's the opposite of what we need. So we need to spread everything out that way while leaving the metal towards the socket relatively untouched. So, next thing that's going to happen, as you can see, we got our distal taper forged in. Straight peen made quick work of it, so now we need just to lay in some edge bevels, starting from the center of the spear and working our way out. And of course, working both sides. I figured this was a good opportunity to demonstrate watering the anvil. It's a technique you can use when you're getting close to being done forging bevels because it blasts the scale off, you don't have to brush it. I think the first comment I got about it was uh, on one of my sword videos. I didn't do it with that because it's 5160, 5160 hates water. With 1075 though, it shouldn't be a problem. So all you do is wet your anvil real good. Piece on it, it creates a steam jacket. And it makes an impressive sound when you strike it and it blasts the scale off. Well, it's the same effect as brushing it, but you don't actually have to stop to brush it. Just a cool little technique. So here's the spearhead after rough forging. Forge welded and pretty, but it's solid. Socket's good and round. It's good and centered. You got a good profile to work with. So next thing we'll do is get the profile roughed out, get the bevels ground in, we'll heat treat this baby. So here's the spear out of the forge. It's a pretty good size. All I'm gonna do now is grind in two flats, leaving a nice thick central ridge, bring these cutting edges down nice and thin. I'm gonna go ahead and bring them to their finished thickness now because I want a brushed finish on the spearhead once it's done. And if I have to grind on it after heat treat, I'm not going to be able to get that. There's no definitive answer of whether or not spearheads actually would have been heat treated because they didn't really need to hold an edge. All they were really used for was thrusting. And, uh, you know, they were meant to be mass produced quickly. But there are historical accounts of spears being used for slashing and cutting. So I'm going to go ahead and heat treat this. And, you know, nothing dull comes out of my shop. So I'm going to make this thing razor sharp. And uh, there's not a whole hell of a lot of work to do. So I'm just going to get on that. I'm going to start shaping out the shaft as well. This is just a poplar dowel cut off at 7 feet. Poplar's not a great wood for a spear shaft, but uh, it's all I could get my hands on locally, readily available. And it's not too much of a stretch to think that in the field, whatever wood was at hand would have been used for spear shafts, whatever they could get their hands on. But I'm going to trim this thing down to about an inch in diameter. Right now it's an inch and three-eighths, which is too thick. Historically, anything over an inch was uncommon. On modern spears, you actually see shafts of inch and a quarter, inch and a half that are used for hunting boar or anything like that. But, you know... Killing people is a lot easier than killing boar, so a one-inch shaft will suffice. So I'm going to get all that fitted up and everything before heat treating. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll rock and roll on this baby. So to trim this spear shaft down, what I've done is I've gone ahead and taken a section right about here in the middle and trimmed it down to its finished thickness. And then I'm just going to slowly work my way out towards the edges using the slack of the belt and rolling the stuff, kind of like that. That should keep it relatively round and make it pretty easy to dress up when I get finished. It's just a lot of material to remove. Next time I do this, I'll probably just order a one inch shaft, so I'll have to worry about this, but you live, you learn. So, spear shaft is off the belt grinder, but as you can see, there's a lot of little ridges and stuff where the edge of the belt grabbed hold of it, maybe you can't see. But now, I've got to go up and down the whole length of the shaft with a wood rasp and take all those ridges out and bring it to a more or less round shape. If you're going to build one of these, save yourself the trouble and buy a one-inch hardwood dowel. I didn't want to order one, I just picked this up at Lowe's. Looking back, I should have ordered one. And then I'll just go up and down the whole shaft with some 120 grit, knock off all the burrs left by the rasp. So. Here's the spearhead before heat treat. I've taken it up to 120 grit. The edges are nice and thin. I should be able to get a good brushed finish and bring these edges down good and sharp after heat treat. So let's quench this baby. So this is just an idea that struck me as I was heating up the spear to heat treat it. I actually heated up the socket and pushed it onto the end that I had ground out to mount the spearhead. Formed it to it pretty nice, so it's just a cool little trick, I think. 1075, oil quench steel, nothing to it really. I forgot to mention, that I plan on affixing the spear to the shaft with a single nail like was done historically. So 
all I got the forge going, I'm gonna go ahead and make a short nail. Jerk this baby up in the old nail header. And there you go, there's our nail. So she came out of the quench pretty clean. She's straight, no cracks. Hardened well. And it blasted off enough of the scale to where I can see enough metal to temper it. So I'm just gonna take my torch and start heating up the center. I want kind of a dark brown over the whole spear. I want it to be good and flexible. So, got a nice dark brown over the whole spearhead. You want it softer than you want a knife so it'll, it'll flex and bend instead of break. All that's left to do now is uh, wire wheel this thing clean, get it sharp, and get it mounted. Get this baby installed. Now I'm going to char and oil the handle just for aesthetics. So I don't know if I can get this whole thing in frame or not, but from uh, the end of the shaft to the end of the tip, it's eight feet long. I put a kind of a stout point on the back end, so say if we stop and we decide we're going to set up camp. I could just stick it in the ground, good to go. Or say if there's a horse coming at me or something, I could stick this end in the ground to get a little bit of better purchase on it. But there you go. I wanted kind of the brushed metal look, so it looks kind of rough. Got my nail in. My shaft actually split a little bit when I put the nail in. So, I mean, which is to be expected to some degree. These were shafts were a consumable item, so I'm not too worried about it. I plan on replacing this one anyway. But anyway, let's give it a throw. All right. Never done this before. I don't really know how to throw a spear. I'm just gonna kind of give it a go. Well, shaft didn't break. Thing stuck in pretty deep. Went to about there. It's kind of cool. So there you go. One eight foot Viking spear. Kind of hard to get the whole thing in frame, but made of 1075 high carbon steel, assembled with a single hand forged nail. You just want to use one nail because if you rivet this to it and it breaks, you're not really gonna be able to get the wood out of the shaft. And uh, there's actually historical accounts of people pulling the nails out of their spears and then throwing them so uh, the enemy couldn't pick it up and throw it back. You know, when you go to pull it out of somebody, the shaft is just going to come loose. But it's made that way to make the shaft easy to replace. But anyway, if you like what you saw, like, share, subscribe, all that jazz. Not the prettiest work I've ever done, but for my first spear, I think it's acceptable. It's definitely serviceable. So, pretty cool.